Welcome to So Very Easy. My name is Laura, and today's video date is February 14th, which is Valentine's Day, the day all about love. So I think this is a good time to do a quilt called Love Is. And the quilt is designed around two panels from the Love Is collection from Maywood Studios. And the panel has this big picture in the center and these lovely little animals around the outside. And there are two different versions, the same layout, but with different pictures. The panel is cut up so we can use the pictures within that quilt. The coordinate fabric to go with the quilt is this beautiful speckled fabric. It reminds me of the soft robin's eggs and really fun prints to go with it. And for the binding, there's a great stripe fabric that can be used. The first thing we need to do is cut the squares out of the panel so we can get the pictures that we want. We will be using a total of 19 little animal cutouts. Both the center squares are going to be used and then some of the other ones so we get to choose what we're going to want in the quilt. Each panel needs to be cut up in the same way. We're going to use some of the pictures on the outside, but we will be using both of those large pictures in the center. The square will need to be 18 and a half inches. So before you cut this apart, draw your 18 and a half inch square. You don't need to cut it, we just need to draw that 18 and a half inch mark. And that way when we go to cut the rest out, we make sure that we have enough to have this centerpiece squared. Once we have the lines drawn, we're going to be able to cut it apart. Along the bottom, we have the words. We can cut off those words and use them later. Then we can cut off the sides. We're gonna be able to cut those off in two long pieces. The two top squares, we can cut out as one big piece and same with the piece in the bottom. With that drawn line, we're going to be able to make sure that we do not trim into our picture. We have lots of room on the sides and the top, but we really want this first one to have that nice, perfect 18 and a half inch square. From here, we can stack up our pieces and work on one pile at a time. From both panels, I'm going to have a total of eight of these larger pictures and four sides. So the first thing we need to do is cut both of these squares to 18 and a half inches. Once the two 18 and a half inch center blocks are done, we're going to be able to cut up the smaller ones. We are only going to need four of these pictures, so you can choose your four favorite. If you have an eight and a half inch square ruler, this is a perfect time to use it. We will be able to see through it. You can square up and center that picture. And then from here, trim off all of the edges and that will give us that perfect eight and a half inch square. However, if you don't have an eight and a half inch ruler, we can still square this up. We can do it with a piece of paper. This outside measurement is an eight and a half inch. I've just cut out the center so that I could square up the picture. The width of this is not important. What I want is that eight and a half inch on the outside. And from here, I can move that piece of paper until my little figure is centered. From here, you're going to take the edge of a ruler and line it up with the edge of the paper. Start by holding that a little bit above the paper so you don't move the paper. And you're gonna be able to line that up and just place it down. I can now cut my first edge. I'm going to rotate the square, gently lift up the ruler, line up the edge, give a double check to make sure your paper hasn't moved. And my second edge is now cut. I'm going to use this ruler as a handlebar, turn that square, gently lift up the ruler, place it back down. One more turn, do my final cut. This paper window now can be used again and again. So we're going to need four of these little pictures cut at eight and a half inches. From those long side pieces, I need to cut a total of 13 six and a half inch blocks. If you have a six and a half inch square, perfect. If not, just make another template so that the outside is six and a half inches. So you'll use that window to center your fabric. Once these are cut out, I'm going to cut all of the fun fabric 
for the inside of the quilt so we can join these all together. I do have a numbering system when I go to cut all my fabric to keep things organized. I have flat floral pins that I've marked with magic marker. The alphabet is going to match with the alphabet in the pattern. So I know this fabric, I need a D piece and an E. This fabric will have F and G. I stick them right on the paper. And then as I cut the fabric, I move the pins to the cut fabric. So I know if my pin's not there, I've already finished that piece. And I'm gonna go through and cut all the fabric, moving all of my pins over. That way I don't always have to refer back to the chart. I'm going to have it all marked on my fabric. With all the fabric cut and lettered, I won't have to stop and cut as I go along. I'm going to be able to put this entire quilt together now. And having those pins will make it really easy to follow the directions. Putting this together is going to be a little bit like a puzzle, but it really is easy. We're going to do each square at a time and then make sections. From there, we're going to put the sections together. As each section is made, I'm going to mark off that section in the quilt. That way at a glance, I know that section is done and then I can go on to the next. Let's start with the first section and it's going to be these top four little blocks. We need four six and a half inch blocks and this little piece in between is R. So I'm going to be able to go to my letters and pull out my number R. And if there's more than one, I'm going to take out that R and put the pin back. And that way I know that's going to be an R for next time. I have my R. Now I need to find my four little characters. Now you can use the characters that they have or choose the four that you would like. The seam allowance is going to be a quarter inch throughout the entire quilt. We need to sew two blocks together along the center seam and press that seam open and flat towards the back. And that will get this to appear as if it's one long piece. We can now put those three pieces together. Throughout the directions, you're going to see some little arrows and those are going to be pressing directions. This first one told us to press the directions open and flat. When we get that center piece done, we're going to press the seams going in towards that letter R. With the first block done, I'm going to mark it on the pattern. You can mark it on your sheet where you do the layout or even on the front cover. I find that piece and I'm going to just mark it. Now I know that piece is done. I'll be able to get to the next piece. The next piece is going to be this long row. I will need four of my little six and a half inch blocks. And these long little pieces are AA. I need to sew those AAs in between each piece. And I'll need one at the top and one at the bottom. Following the pressing directions, the first top piece is going to be pressed up to the top. The rest are all going to be pressed down to the bottom. We now have this piece done. The next block is this little fox and two more AA strips. So that will be the block being made. I have my six and a half inch square, then my two AAs coming behind. That piece is now done. The next will be this six and a half inch block with our H and I all the way around. With all of my pieces pre-cut, it really does take the guesswork out of it. The sizes will just match together. H is going to go at the top and the bottom. I needs to go on each side. Those two seams need to be pressed in. The next is this little kitten and we need W and X. So we will be making that little square and we're going to make that block the same as we did that last one. With the pressing done the same way, we're done that block. Step 10 is making this little block here and it has a little extra edge on it. It's still the six and a half inch blocks, F, G, and Q. We're making that larger block with that outside border. The block is put together the same as the last two. And this time that one extra piece is going to go along the outside. 
we have one six and a half inch block left. It's going to fit in this corner. We need N, O, and this bottom piece is going to be Y. So that will become the piece that we make. The stitching is going to go together the same with the addition of that Y block going onto the bottom. All of the six and a half inch blocks have been used up. We can start on the eight and a half. The four eight and a half inch blocks are going to be made the same way. We have the two strips that are two and a half inches by eight and a half inches that are going to go on the top and the bottom. The seams are going to be pressed out. The two side pieces that are two and a half inches by twelve and a half inches will be stitched on and those seams need to be pressed out. And we're going to do the same to all four blocks. With those four eight and a half inch blocks done, we only have two blocks to put borders on. And they are the big 18 and a half inch blocks. So all we have left are these two big blocks. We're going to be able to continue that theme by putting those two strips on the top and the bottom. We're going to press them out, then the two side strips we're going to press those out. We do that to both of the 18 and a half inch blocks. There's one little piece that we need to make before we put all of this together. And this is this little area here which we need to have six of the number BBs and put them together to make a long stack. Once all those strips are sewn together, press the seams going up towards the top, match up the seams, and stitch that quarter inch. Press the seam, going towards the center. This block now has turned into this block and all the components or all the puzzle pieces are done to put this quilt together. Let's continue sewing these pieces together in units. We can add to this very last unit. We have that cat and the little stack. We can put those two together and then this block will become one. So this was the last unit. We have the little cat and the little six and a half inch with those two strips on it. We can sew the two together here and those two will match up perfect to this last block. This component or puzzle piece will fit right beside the main big square. We can now build a row that's going to go on top of this. One of our eight and a half inch squares, the very first piece that we started and another eight and a half inch. We're going to sew these three together and press those seams open and flat. The long strip with the four little six and a half inch blocks will fit on the right side. The top half of the quilt is done. We can work on the bottom half and it's going to be the same way, just making sure all of those pieces go together. The bottom of the quilt consists of the last five blocks. We're going to start by sewing these four blocks together. One row needs to go together and then the next. So match up the raw edges and you will stitch those two rows together. That four block will now fit perfectly beside the large block. The bottom of that quilt is now done. We can stitch it to the top and those two pieces are going to match perfectly. It's important that you go back to the pattern and always follow the pressing directions. Those pressing directions are going to help the pieces nestle together where the seams do meet and it will go together just like a puzzle. The entire body of the quilt is now done. The next we'll be putting a pieced border. We need to make two strips with 11 pieces sewn together so that the short sides are joining and two with 15 strips. When we have those long strips together, we're going to be able to sew the two strips with the 11 on the top and the bottom. Longer strips that have 15 pieces will go on the sides. And with that little pieced border on, Love Is is now done. Having a quarter inch seam allowance and the fabric well pressed before you cut it assures that this goes together just like a puzzle. We're going to start with those smaller pieces and just keep building up. There is no trimming the squares down. They all fit exactly like a puzzle. After all, quilting really is like building puzzles 
out of fabric. I'll put a link in the description to Maywood Studios free pattern. And thank you for joining me today on So Very Easy. Feel free to subscribe and come on back. Let's see what we're sewing next time in the sewing room. Bye for now.